If you're like me and have been finger typing since the 90s, then you may feel a little left out when it comes to playing PC games. Well, thanks to Steam's big picture mode, we are easily able to use a controller to play any game on Steam, especially those games that do not support a controller natively. In today's video, I'm going to cover my controller setup for BattleBit Remastered, including how to overclock your controller to a 1000 polling rate. While this setup is very complex, with many buttons having double mappings, you will find that the flow while in-game feels very natural and competitive. I'm no stranger to using a controller for competitive games, and I've been using a controller to play Hell at Loose since Update 7, before there was ever official support for the game. I have spent hundreds of hours in big picture mode dialing in every setting for every game I play, and I've spent about 90 hours dialing in this setup for BattleBit. What you can expect out of this guide is a deep dive into big picture mode, and settings that you can adjust to further dial in this configuration to your preferences. BattleBit has a ton of key bindings, which in the future will probably change a bit to encourage controller players to play the game, such as having your primary weapon and secondary weapon toggle with one key binding versus having to use two key bindings. Let's start with the layout and a bit of explanation of how this works. As you can tell, I have every key binding mapped to a specific button on the keyboard, except the right stick, which is mapped to the mouse. I am using a DualShock 4 controller with a chat pad attached to the bottom. The chat pad is needed to accommodate all the key bindings for this game. I am using a white oak chat pad, but any other chat pad will work just fine, although you might have to change some of the mappings in big picture mode to accommodate for different chat pad layouts. Once big picture mode is open, click on your game, and on the right you'll see the controller icon. Go ahead and click it. At the top, you can see my layout, BB-DS4-CustomCurve46 Complicated Keyboard Layout. Yours will probably say Gamepad with High Precision Camera Slash Aim, or something similar. Click the Layout tab, and then select the Community Layout tab. Scroll down and search for BB-DS4-CustomCurve46, or use the search function if needed. Left-click the config, and at the bottom right of the screen, click Apply Layout. Next, we will click on View Layout. I personally do not like having more than two mappings for each button, as additional mappings add noticeable delay when performing an action. And while we can set that delay, we want to be able to perform these actions in the blink of an eye. The first thing you may notice is a bunch of letters next to each button. This is how I map the controller to the keys on the keyboard. Since this config is already mapped out, we will simply input these mappings into the key binding section of BattleBit. But there's some things you should know in case you need to adjust or remap some of these settings to accommodate your chat pad or controller preferences. Besides all the mappings, the secret sauce lies in the right stick being mapped as a joystick mouse, and adjustments made to this are very noticeable even in small increments. So go ahead and click on the back button on the bottom right, then click edit layout. On the left is some tabs that we will be going through that pertain to buttons on the controller. Any controller will work, but you might have to map these manually to achieve the same setup, as I'm not sure if Steam will load a DS4 mapping when a PS5 or Xbox controller is plugged in. Also, by default, the gray zones for the sticks are rather large, so before we get to the in-game key bindings, I will show you how to change the default gray zones. Alright, back to the mapping. In the Buttons tab, You'll see that this config uses some default mappings to minimize the amount of time we will spend with the key bindings in game, such as the X button is mapped to the space bar, circle button is mapped to the F key, and the square button is mapped to the R key. Triangle, on the other hand, has two mappings. Command 1 is mapped to the M key, which selects your primary weapon, while Command 2 is a double press which is mapped to the N key which pulls out your secondary weapon. Let's take a look at how this functions. If you click where it says N key, this is where you'll see unlimited options to change this mapping. Go ahead and click back, then click on the gear icon to the right of the N key. A box will pop up, and at the top you will see this is mapped to a double press action. Click where it says double press, and you'll see a long list of options with actions that can be performed. Double press is an easy function to remember, which is why it's being used here. Click on settings to gain access to even more control options. By default, double tap time is 190 milliseconds, but I find that 200 milliseconds is an optimal setting between double tapping when you're in panic mode or relaxed mode. Go ahead and click close and scroll down to the bumpers section. 
As you see, we have L1 and R1 with double mappings. Command 1 under both L1 and R1 are mapped to Q and E respectively. Holding down L1 or R1 initiates leaning left or right. Command 2 for L1 and R1 are simply mapped to the left and right bracket keys. In game, the L1 double press action pertains to throwing a grenade, and the R1 double press action pertains to combining magazines. If you scroll down to the menu button section, the share button is mapped to the S key, which we will hold down to see the scoreboard, and the options button is mapped to the Z key, which is for going prone and turning on and off a vehicle. I prefer having a dedicated prone key, so there's no doubt or delay when needing to get to cover. Next, let's go through the D-pad section. Every button on the D-pad has a double mapping. Up on the D-pad is mapped to the G key, which holding up on the D-pad in-game will bandage your player, while double pressing up on the D-pad is mapped to the page up key, which we will use to build a wall. Down on the D-pad is mapped to the U key, which we will press to select fire modes. Double pressing down on the D-pad, which is mapped to the page down key, will unbuild a wall. Left on the D-pad is mapped to the J key, which will pull out your secondary gadget. Double pressing left on the D-pad, which is mapped to the equal key, will ping your target or select the objective if you're squad leader. Right on the D-pad is mapped to the H key, which pulls out your primary gadget. Double pressing right on the D-pad, which is mapped to the minus key, is key bound in game to switch between your main sight and your canted sight. Now let's move on to the triggers section. By default, you see there's two actions that can be performed for each trigger. I don't have any need for a double action on triggers, so R2 is mapped to the left mouse click, which is fire, and L2 is mapped to the right mouse click, which is for ADS. Next, let's move on to the joystick section. This is where we start to get into the secret sauce of this guide, and where you can adjust things to your liking if necessary. You'll notice that to the right of joystick behavior, joystick mouse is selected. This is important for us to be able to adjust the parameters of the stick. Click the gear icon next to where it says right stick. This is where most configurations fail to really dial in the feel of the right stick. Most configurations set the horizontal and vertical scale to 100, which we can think of this as a resolution scale in percentages. No game requires a 100% resolution scale, and if using this at 100%, the stick will feel very sensitive and lowering sensitivity in game will only make the right stick feel sluggish. So how we combat that is by changing the resolution scale to somewhere between 48% and 52%. Cutting the scale in half allows us to hit that same spot on the stick more effectively when controlling recoil. For instance, if you must pull 30% on the stick to control recoil to maintain steady aim on full auto, then with a 100% scale, you must hit exactly 30%. If the resolution scale is set to 50% and you still need to pull 30% on the stick to maintain steady aim in full auto, then you've successfully doubled the size of that sweet spot that's needed to obtain a 30% pull. This allows you to hit that 30% target with a very small margin of error and allows micro adjustments without overshooting constantly. I chose a resolution scale of 52%, which not only extends the length of our custom curve, but widens the recoil control zone by just a fraction of a percent, which is noticeable in game. The guns in BattleBit start with a lot of recoil, and as you gain attachments for your gun, the recoil can diminish by quite a bit, and with a 52% resolution scale, every gun should be controllable from a vanilla loadout to a maxed out loadout. If we look at the section called Stick Response Curve, you will see a drop down box on the right. If you are an experienced gamer, and prefer a linear curve, you can set linear in this box and move on to the next part. After playing Hell Let Loose for 3300 hours and requiring a setup that allows for fine control at long range and still retain quick control at close range, I prefer a custom response curve of 60. The larger the number is, the finer control you get throughout a larger portion of the stick's movement range. Hell Let Loose requires you to be able to hit those 300 meter shots and also be competitive in very close combat ranges, while being able to control recoil. BattleBit has some pretty aggressive recoil, vertical and horizontal, so setting this custom curve to 46 allows the recoil control to happen earlier on the stick's movement, whereas setting this to 60 for BattleBit would force the recoil to be near the middle of the stick where the curve starts to quickly reach max resolution. 
therefore requiring much finer movement to control recoil. A curve of 46 sits in a perfect spot to control recoil for any gun, and keep that control within the first 30% of the stick's movement. Just for reference, the default mouse sensitivity in Steam's configurator is 275%. You can see this by the downward pointing triangle. Output access is also default and shouldn't be messed with unless you wish to have a setup where you're using a gyro for a specific horizontal or vertical movement. Scroll down to Dead Zones. This is a custom dead zone setting. Default isn't where the downward triangle is on this one though, but actually 800. Battlebit feels like there is a larger gray zone than what any other game has by default. I prefer the default gray zones of Battlefield 5, so I always try to obtain that same feel. Remember, we will still go through setting up the real dead zones of your controller in a later section. They just happen to be in a different section of Steam. Dead zone inner should be at 700, while the outer ring is 25,000 by default. If you click back in the bottom right, we can now check out the action performed by clicking R3. This is mapped to the left control key, which is a default crouch key for many games. As for the left joystick behavior, this is set up as a directional pad. I use the settings WXAD. I always save the S key for scoreboard, just a personal preference. You'll see that L3 click is mapped to the shift key. Again, this is a default keyboard mapping for steady aim or run. Next up is the trackpad behavior. I never use the touch function, only the click functions, as I want tactical performance out of my controller. The right click behavior has two mappings. Command 1 is mapped to the Y key, which I currently do not have anything mapped to in this game, so feel free to map this to anything you wish. Command 2, however, is mapped to the escape key. This is important because we do not want to have to reach up to hit the escape key on the keyboard mid-game, so a quick double press here allows us to stay focused and get out of any menu with a quick double press of this button. The left trackpad behavior is also mapped to a single button and is mapped to the T key. The T key in-game toggles the map. You may think that there could be a better button for this action, but we need all of our weapons on easily accessible buttons, and being that this single button performs only one action, it's easy to hit on the fly really quickly. To adjust Steam's default gray zones, which remain the same for every game you install from here on out, we must navigate back to any game's main screen within Big Picture Mode. Next to the controller icon, there's a gear icon. Click that, and then click Properties. Next, click Controller. Then on the top right, click the underlined phrase that says Controller General Settings. Once in here, on the right, you'll see where it says Calibration and Advanced Settings. Click the box that says Open to the right. My dead zone settings are set to 2600. Zero gray zone is 2000, and default is 4000. I use the controller to set this number to 2600. Simply drag the slider all the way to the left, then press the D-pad three times to the right. The smaller this gray zone setting is, without having stick drift in-game, will enlarge the stick travel distance with regard to the resolution scale we set earlier, essentially smoothing out our custom curve of 46. If you experience stick drift in-game with these settings, I'd suggest getting a different controller, or enlarging the gray zones here, and not in the BattleBit config itself. Finally, we can launch BattleBit, and you can copy my key bindings. There's really no reason to go through every one, except adjusting for your personal preference when flying the drone or helicopters. I will leave each screen section of the key bindings on for 5 seconds, so you have time to pause the video and type them all in. To set the flying key bindings, use the mouse to set horizontal vertical or positive and negative. What I use the chat pad for is for quick access to alternate functions of the game, such as night vision, VoIP, cutting ropes, and pulling up the squad leader menu. Your chat pad may differ, but set these actions to your preferences. For me, I have proximity chat mapped to semicolon, squad chat to slash, and command chat to the quote key. My nine key is set to night vision, and the zero key is mapped to turning the laser or flashlight on and off, and turning headlights on or off. I wish the devs would implement key bindings for switching seats, as for right now they are mapped to the F keys, F1, F2, F3, etc. I would like to map these keys to the number keys on the chat pad, but for right now, switching seats can be done by holding the X button on the controller. Stay with me, we're almost done. Last thing I need to show you is how to overclock your controller and how the controller functions in game. If you want to use Freelook, then I suggest mapping Freelook to the Y key, 
which will give you access to Freelook by single pressing the right trackpad button. To overclock your controller from a 250 polling rate to a 1000 polling rate, we must download HID USBF from Lord of Mice. Overclocking your controller will greatly improve the feel and movement in game. Go to this website, link is in the description. Click on HIDUSBF.zip and click the download button on the right. Extract the file and open up the driver folder and double click the setup file. When the program opens, on the top left, click All. Find your controller. Mine is listed as USB Audio Device Dash Wireless Controller HID Compliant Game Controller. Highlight it by left clicking it. Then click Install Service. In the box next to selected rate, select 1000 and click Install Service. Then check the box for Filter on Device and click Install Service. Unplug your controller and plug it back in, and you should see the B interval change to 1 and the polling rate to 1000. That's it. We're ready to see how all of this functions in game. So here we are. I'm just going to go through every function one by one so you can see how it all works. Now you got your standard L2. Aim down sight. R2. Fire. Pretty simple. Got your L1, which is lean. R1, lean right. When I double tap L1, that's going to throw my grenade. Pretty simple. Square is reload. Shoot some, just so I can show you the other double tap. R1, when we double tap, is going to be combined magazines. Pretty simple. If you hit left on the trackpad, that's going to pull up our map. Pretty simple. If you double tap right on the trackpad, it'll pull up our menu. Now, there's no way for me to really get hurt here, I don't believe, but let's go. Left on the D-pad is going to be our rocket. Square to reload. Right on the D-pad is going to be whatever our deployables are. Let's see if I can get hurt. No, nope, can't really get hurt in the... Down on the D-pad changes our fire mode. If I double tap up on the D-pad, that will change our zero distancing. If you're trying to build something, then that will build a wall or down double click on the D-pad will unbuild a wall. We have our options button, that's to go prone. We have our share button, which won't work in here, but that is our scoreboard button. L3 is just run or steady aim if you're sniper. Crouch is going to be R3. Again, I like to have a dedicated button for prone, so I know that I'm going prone. X is obviously jump. Triangle. If I press it, double press triangle, it's going to pull out my secondary weapon. Press it one time to pull out my primary. Don't judge my aim. I'm not the best. But this will get you functional in game. And you can see it's pretty quick, even the aim down sight turning is pretty quick and it also allows for very fine control apparently pulling on the stick you can see it's got really good fine control even in hip fire I can but yeah that's about it Enjoy.